Hey guys, it's Julia. Welcome back to Hardware 3D. In this video, we are going to set up error checking and rich diagnostics for our direct 3D subsystem. So, in the last video, we did some cool stuff, but one thing that we did that was not so cool is we called all these functions without even checking the return values. Now, direct 3D functions, generally, they're going to return an H result, and you want to check that to see if an error has occurred. If an error occurs, you want to throw an exception with some diagnostic information that's going to help you fix the problem. Now, you might think it's very simple. You would just do the same thing that you did for your Windows exceptions because they're all H results. But here's the thing, and it requires a little bit of a history lesson. So originally, the DirectX SDK was separate from the Windows SDK. And the H results for the DirectX SDK were not compatible with the Windows ones. So you would have a uh, separate library called DXAir, and that would give you some functions that will take those H results and give you human readable strings. Now somewhere down the road, the DirectX API was incorporated into the Windows SDK. And when that happened, they changed format message so that it would also support DirectX errors, meaning you don't need dxer.lib anymore. But here's the thing, that only works if you have Windows 8 or above. If you have Windows 7, format message isn't gonna give you shit. So you still got to use DXAir. The only problem is when they incorporated the DirectX SDK into the Windows SDK, they trashed DXAir. It no longer exists in there. So if you're trying to build targeting Windows 7 and uh, you want your error codes, too bad. Go to hell. Well, they did give us, they gave us a zip file with the source code for Dir DirectX Air and you can build that in. The only problem with that is that the version they give you only supports Unicode. The original supported Unicode and also narrow strings. So, what is, what's a boy to do? Well, someone on GitHub saw the problem and said, here's a version that supports um, both narrow and wide strings. So it was taken from that previous page and then it was modified so that it could work with ANSI strings, which are narrow strings. But the only problem with this is that if you try to build it, you get a shit ton of errors. There's a whole bunch of problems with it. There's bugs, there's typos. So what Chili did is he started with those source files and he fixed all the problems. Took some time, took some sweat and blood and tears, but here you go. These five files here are all you need for DirectX error. So I added them to the project. And uh, let's see what else I did. In graphics.h, I added a bunch of exception classes. For, um, for graphics exceptions here. So you've got a base graphics exception, then you've got a graphics exception that has a H result. So that stores the H result and you can get the error string and the description from that. If you look in DirectX error.h, it's got two main functions that we're interested. Get error string and get error description. Get error string just gives you the name of the macro that represents that error. And get error description gives you a description of what the error is all about. So, we've got our H result exception, and down here we've got a specialized exception from that called device remove the exception, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But in graphics.cpp, um, basically what you would expect, I define a couple of macros here to make throwing exceptions a little nicer. So one of these is a little different than the macro that we used in Windows. This one does more for us. So this one is graphics throw failed. And what it does is you give it an expression in here and it will check the return value of that expression to see if it's a failure code. And if it is, then it will throw a graphics exception. So this one does a check and a throw all in once. It's going to make our code a little bit sexier. And the one down here just creates a specialized device removed exception. Uh, and then we would have to throw this ourselves. And you'll see how that works in just a little bit. But um, for all the things down here, now all we got to do is now wrap our calls in graphics throw failed and it will check the return and throw if it is a failure. Do it for here, throw failed, throw failed, all that stuff. Now one thing you've got to know is that this macro expects that HR variable exists in the local scope. So you've got to make sure you put one of those in here before you start using these macros. It's a little bit of a dependency there. And down here in end frame is a little special case. The present function, it can give you an error code that is device removed. And this is a special error code because it has additional information. And the only way to get that information is to call get device removed reason 
from that device. And that'll give you the reason uh, that this error was generated. Generally, device removed errors, um, it's not just if you physically pull the graphics card out of the machine when it was running. It's usually caused due to something like a driver crash. Or maybe you're overclocking your GPU and something screwed up. That's a common reason why you get this error. Uh, so we want that additional information. So I created the graphics, uh, the device removed exception, and uh, its H result actually represents the removed reason. So if we get a device removed error, we throw one of these guys. Otherwise, we just do the normal thing. And that's really about it. These um, graphics exception stuff, it's pretty similar to what you've seen in the Windows. You call get error string to get the error string from the H result, and you call get error description to get that description. It needs a buffer to fill into, and I just make one 512. That's enough for any description that we can get. And that's pretty much it. Uh, in Windows.h, I added one more exception in here. It's not a big deal, but let's look at it. It's called the no graphics exception. And this exception is going to be thrown when we try to get graphics, but the pointer uh, hasn't been set yet. And the reason why I define a new function class for this kind of exception is because there is no H result associated with a no graphics exception. So it wouldn't make sense to use the uh, the Windows exception that we've been using up until now. So I create a base exception class, I inherit uh, HR exception from that, and I inherit no graphics exception from the base. Alright, let's take our error checking for a little spin here. So I've put some garbage input into create device, and if we run this, we get our exception, tells us error code in hexadecimal and decimal, uh, the name of the error, and a description of the error. And this description tells us something interesting. Use of the debug version will provide runtime debug output with further information. So that's good, and it's actually important, because if we look at this, we passed it some bunk uh, window data. All it tells us is that um, application has made an erroneous API call that it had enough information to avoid. That's not a lot of information telling us exactly what went wrong. It tells us the line, what went wrong, so we know that the, the problem will be here, which means we know that there's a problem with creating the device, but we don't really have any good clues to tell us exactly that it was uh, the window handle that was the problem. Now what if we take the advice in that message and we create a direct 3D device on the debug layer. So by setting this flag here, it will now create the device on the debug layer. And now we're going to get the same error code, and we should expect the same because it's the same H result. Um, so then you might be saying, well, what's the advantage then of putting it into the debug layer? Well, if we look at the output of our program, we can now see some stuff that wasn't in there before this DXGI warning and this DXGI error. Uh, output window is not a valid window handle. Well, that tells us the problem right away. And here it tells us output window is invalid. So, by enabling the debug layer, we can get this information into our debug output window here. And that's pretty good. Now all we have to do is when we get an error, when we get an exception, uh, we just know to look up into the debug window to see exactly what went wrong. And that'll work in everything, but you guys know Chili, right? Chili want it real sexy. Chili wants that information right in the exception, so that when the message box pops up, it will have that information right there. I don't have to hunt for it in the outbug, output window. So, how do we do this? Well, it turns out it's kind of complicated. So in order to access that information programmatically, we have got an interface with the DXGI info queue, and it's a little complicated uh, to get this all set up. So I've wrapped the whole process up in its own object, the DXGI info manager. Uh, so let's see how that works. Well, first of all, the uh, we need a function DXGI get debug interface to get that info interface, and that that function is in a separate DLL. So we've got to load the DLL. Then after that, we find the address of that function in the DLL. And then we can call that function to get our interface. So that's the construction of the info manager. It gets that interface. Uh, and the destructor releases it, of course. Then down here, when we want to actually get messages, uh, basically what we do is we loop through messages in the queue. And messages, they go by index from zero 
to number messages minus one. Uh, so to get any specific message, what you would do is you would call get message with a null pointer, and that'll fill this message length with the length of the, the message at that index. And then once you have the size of that index, you would allocate a buffer, and then you would call get message again with a pointer to that buffer this time, and it will fill that buffer with a message. And then we just take the uh, description part, the message is a structure, we'll take the description part, and we're gonna put that into a vector of strings. And then when we're done with all the messages, we would return the vector. And there you go, there's get messages. Now the thing is, get messages, if we just loop through all the messages, we would get every message since the beginning of the program. But what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to call a function set, and then when I call get messages, it will only give me the messages that happened after the last call to set. So therefore, I can constrain the messages I get for any direct 3D function call. The process would be call set, call your direct 3D function, and then if there's something goes wrong, call get messages, and you'll get only the errors that were caused by that direct 3D function. And the way it works is fairly simple. I store the index of the last message uh, in the queue when I call set. So when I call set, next will be set to the index of the next message that will go into the queue. So the index of one past the current last message. And then when I call get messages, it will give me, it'll loop through all the messages from next until the end of the queue. So if new messages were inserted into the queue after I called set, those are the messages that are going to get uh, output from get messages. One last thing I wanna note before moving on here is most of these functions uh, they take a parameter, and I'm using DXGI debug all, uh, and that will get me all debug messages, but you can get debug messages from only DXGI or from only D3D. But we want all of those, right? Just for your information, here are the options. Debug all gives you everything. DX gives you Direct3D and DXGI. DXGI gives you only DXGI app gives you only custom things that you put in there yourself with add application message so there's an option to uh, put things in this queue on your own and then d3d11 will only give you stuff from d3d11 now in graphics.h i include the info manager here and i make a little modification to the h result exception it'll now also store a string of uh, extra info and there's a function here to get error info, and that'll get us the info from our uh, info manager. And in our graphics, we are going to include an info manager, but only if we're building in debug mode. So if we're building in release mode, this is not going to be part of the graphics object. That's important to note. Now I've added a bunch of macros into graphics.cpp. And the reason for this is we want different behavior depending on whether we're in debug mode or in release mode. So if we're in debug mode, we want to be adding, we want to use the info manager to add uh, information. So we're going to call get messages and pump that information into our HR exception. And before we call the function, we're going to call info manager set so that if something goes wrong, we're only going to get messages about the most current function call. Uh, so there you go, you've got uh, versions for when uh, debug is enabled and versions for when you're in release mode. And we only wanna create a uh, device on the debug layer if we're in debug mode. So we put another switch here that uh, controls the flags used for the create device. And I renamed some of the macros here, so graphics throw info, will throw with info if we're in debug, it will throw without info if we're in release. End frame, again, it's a little special case because we've got to call two functions to get all the information out. So we, we call info manager set only if we're in debug. Then we do the manual error check. We check for device removed. And if we do, we have device removed, then we call graphics device removed except to create an exception with the reason, and we throw that. And this macro is also, depending on whether or not we are in debug mode, it will also add debug info. Otherwise, we just create a normal graphics exception and throw that, again, with or without info, depending on what mode we're in. And that's basically it. The new uh, exception class, HR exception, 
it will take an additional parameter of a vector of strings and it'll join them together with new lines to form the info message. And here, if we have anything in the info message, we will also display that. And let's see how that works. So again, we're going to mess up our input into create device and we're going to run in debug mode. And now we get our graphics exception and down here we get our error info. So here we go. We've got uh, IDXGI factory create swap chain. Output window is not a valid window handle and create swap chain resize buffer. The output window is invalid. So both of those messages, um, they were captured and they were put into our exception displayed for us in this window here to make our life just a little bit easier. Let's try another one here. Create render target view. So we're going to put in here a null pointer. And when we run that, what do we get? So again, the original H result doesn't give us a lot of information. The parameter is incorrect. But down here we see create render target view. A render target view cannot be created from a null resource. And we see here the parameter that we had set the null pointer was the resource parameter. So it's this is very good information. It'll help us track down our errors much quicker, speed up development time, and it will save you from going bald in frustration. And I know I've said this in the video on Windows errors, but I'm going to say it again. This is so important that you check your errors and that you give yourself as much information as possible, especially when you're just starting out learning a new software development kit. You're going to screw so many things up. And if you don't have all the information you could be getting, you're going to be spending a lot more time with your finger up your butt trying to figure out these problems than you actually need to. So do yourself a favor, take the high road and get that diagnostic information into your program as early as possible. But that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we're going to make one more upgrade to the infrastructure of our graphics before we move on adding to our rendering capabilities. And that upgrade is we're going to replace all this garbage with some super sexy smart pointer technology. One more video of building sexy infrastructure, I promise, and then we'll get right back in to the fooling around drawing shit on the screen. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more hardware 3D.